Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who comes to wake us from sleep, who leads us into the light of grace. Amen. Let us prepare the way of the Lord by confessing our sin against God and our neighbor. Let us pray. God of all time, we confess that we have not prepared for your merciful reign among us. We ignore our neighbors in need and fail in the labor of justice and peace. In your mercy, forgive us. Grant us wisdom to welcome and share your love and to seek all the things that will endure until Christ comes in glory. Amen. Comfort. O oh, comfort my people, says our God. In Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven and all things are made new. Rejoice in this good news. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Jonathan, can you blow out this one candle? Mm -hmm. Just one. <sighs> there you go. There you go. Here, have a seat. All right. Today we honor the gift of rest and healing. To truly rest, we need dark. In the deep darkness of sleep, our bodies and brains heal. In this time of high anxiety and these days of stress and worry, we give thanks for the healing of darkness. May we be blessed by this gift of rest. Okay. Ready to pray? I'm going to pray. Let us pray. Let's pray. Oh Lord, thank you for the dark in which our dreams yeah. stir and are revealed. Okay. Thank you for the dark in which we can find rest and peace from the chaos of the world. Thank you for the dark of the earth where seeds come to life. Thank you for the dark of the night sky where the beauty of the stars can be seen. Thank you for the dark of Mary's womb, where Jesus, God's son, became human. Thank you for the dark of the night, where the Holy Family sought rest. Thank you for the dark of a barn, where our Savior was born. May we be blessed by the light. May we be blessed by the darkness. Amen. Amen. The first reading from Isaiah, the 64th chapter. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence. As when fire kindles brushwood and fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you are angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our, and our inequities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us. 
and have delivered us into the hand of our inequity. Yet, O Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember inequity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. Word of God, word of life. The second reading from 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you are called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Word of God, Word of Life. This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, In those days after the suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows. Neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Be, be, beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves his home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work and commands the doorkeeper to be on watch. Therefore, keep awake. For you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you all, I say now, keep awake. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Can you believe it's Advent already? Or maybe, better yet, thank goodness, it's finally Advent. The end of 2020 is finally near. <laughs> but the beginning of the church year is upon us. And Christmas is truly right around the corner. And today... Today is the beginning of Advent. But what exactly does that mean, though? I mean, we know what Advent is, sort of, right? It's this time before Christmas where we get four Sundays to prepare in various ways for Christmas. But of course, Advent goes deeper than that. It can be more meaningful to us than that if we try to understand it a bit better. Literally, Advent means coming or comes before. It is this season of preparation, a season of waiting and watching. It is the season of hope that will come in the birth of the Christ child. The Christian year begins with the season of Advent. And this way of beginning is itself significant. 
It feels like the church year should begin with the trumpets of Easter or the softness of Christmas Eve or the fires of Pentecost. But instead, we begin in the shadows of despair, war, sorrow, and hate. For it's precisely there and in places like this that God's grace will arrive. Between now and the arrival of Christmas Eve, the church has traditionally considered a threefold pattern of waiting and watching that marks the days. It's been more than 800 years since St. Bernard of Clairvaux taught that Advent waiting takes three forms. First off, our waiting is grounded in the past and the witness of ancient Israel, who for centuries waited in anticipation for the coming of Christ, the promised Messiah. Second, our waiting is grounded in the present, and the fellowship we share with Christians throughout the world as we prepare ourselves for the arrival of December 25th and the celebration of Christ's birth among us. Third, our waiting is grounded in the future, as all of creation longs for the promised return of Jesus at the completion of all time. It's this third aspect of waiting that is the focus of this morning's gospel reading. Set towards the end of Jesus' earthly ministry, this section from the 13th chapter of Mark gives us a glimpse of how Jesus taught his followers to pay attention. Watch for deception. Watch out for yourselves. Watch during the difficult days ahead. In the face of environmental, political, social, and cosmic calamity, stay awake. Stay alert. Jesus said that there would be startling signs in the heavens fear rippling throughout the populations, and the Son of Man coming in cloud with power and great glory. Hmm, I don't know how comforting that feels to you. It doesn't feel super hopeful to me. But for our ancestors and the faith who lived during Mark's time, Rome's vengeance shattered and shook their world to its very core. As Jesus said, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. This was probably not meant to be taken literally, but the faithful followers of Christ in Mark's gospel they knew the fear and despair and anxiety that accompanied the idea that their world was utterly broken and falling apart. Because not only was the Roman Empire oppressive and abusive, the imperial armies had vanquished any sense of a rebellion of Jews who would rise up to fight the Romans. And then the empire destroyed the Jewish temple desecrated what for Jews was nothing less than the sacred heart of the world, burned it to the ground. The message of Mark's gospel is a message of hope proclaimed in the midst of catastrophe and despair. And so to really hear the gospel of Mark is... And so to really hear what the Gospel of Mark is proclaiming, we have to listen from a position of desolation, chaos, and bewilderment. We have to listen alongside those first followers of Christ who were living through what could be called their world coming to an end. We have to listen alongside alongside the traumatized soldier the displaced refugee, the heartbroken addict, the exhausted nurse, the mourning spouse. Or maybe we just listen as ourselves living through a pandemic and political chaos with all the anxiety and fear that accompanies that. This is where Mark lives. 
These are the depths from which Jesus proclaims his good news. When the death-dealing forces seemed to have the upper hand, one ancient response was to envision an imminent future in which God directly comes to rescue in a spectacular fashion, righting wrongs, casting out wrongdoers, and inaugurating a new era of justice and compassion. What Advent can teach us is that There is great meaning to be found in a life lived with the knowledge that Jesus promised to return in the midst of hurt and pain and chaos and despair. And that return is imminent. It is coming. We don't know when, but it could be any moment now. Jesus is coming back as he promised he would, as we proclaim in the creed that he will. Jesus is coming back and he will bring an end to all the death-dealing forces of this world. This is how the people of the first century lived. Those who lived in the first generation or so of the Christian faith lived with the expectation that Jesus would return imminently, before some of them died. Consequently, they lived paying careful attention to their faith and their relationship with God. They believed that Christ could return at any time, and so they were constantly prepared for that possibility. If Jesus returned, they didn't want to be found drifting from God, but wanted to be at the heart of the promise with a strong faith. Now we know that Jesus did not return in their lifetime. But because of their careful attention to faith and faithfulness, their lives were enriched immeasurably. They lived a very faith-filled and meaningful life. This third aspect of Advent preparation could be a blessing for us today. If we believed, truly believed, it to be possible that Christ might return during our lifetimes, we too could find ourselves taking our faith much more seriously. We too could live in constant awareness of our faith, our relationship with God, our relationship with the community of faith, our relationship with our neighbors, and our relationship with those we struggle to love and understand. We, too, could draw nearer to God and deeper into the promise of the gospel. And it could make a difference in the world if we lived that way. To really hear what the Gospel of Mark is saying, we first need to enter the shadows, those places where all seems lost. Roman empires and armies desecrate and destroy the temple, ruining the sacred heart of the world, not just in first century Palestine, but also here and now. In a time of pandemic, many of us already know the shadows of suffering, anxiety, exhaustion, and grief. A key message of Advent and Christmas is that such shadows are precisely the place where Jesus comes and where the church is called to go. We enter into this third aspect aspect of Advent waiting and watching, not to scare or frighten about the end of time, but to help us discover what it means to live with the spirit of anticipation that the first generation of Christian believers had. In the midst of feeling as if the world is utterly falling and in some cases being torn totally apart. Once we have entered those dark valleys of fear and despair, 
both intellectually and emotionally, from there we can proclaim the good news. The hope that rings out when all hope seems lost. God is on the way. God is near. God is coming. This Advent, I hope we can join in remembering how God's people waited for years, longing for the arrival of the Messiah. I hope we can join in preparing our hearts and homes that Christ might find a place to dwell at the center of them. Most of all, I hope that we can take these words of Christ's return to heart and allow them to create for us the expectation that Jesus might come back within our lifetime and the motivation to give our faith a central position in our lives. As we enter the season of Advent, my friends, this is the perfect time to name what Advent is all about. Entering into the shadows of despair, war, sorrow, and hate, but actively waiting for Jesus to come. And whether or not Christ returns on our watch, I can guarantee you it will be every it will be worth every bit of effort it takes in the waiting. Amen. Yeah.
Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. On this first Sunday of the church year, let us pray that God comes quickly into this weary world. We respond to each petition with the words, come to help us. Let us pray. Immortal, invisible God, only wise, we pray for the church, both our congregation and assemblies around the globe. Give us your life. Show us your presence. Grant us your wisdom. Shepherd for another year of grace our pastors, deacons, musicians, and all who minister in the church. Stir up your strength, O oh God. Come to help us. God of the sparrow, God of the whale, protect the animals, whether wild or farmed or tame. Restore devastated habitats and polluted waters. Calm the storms that devastate the coasts. Renew the face of the earth and our relationship to it. Stir up your strength, O oh God. Come to help us. Mighty fortress, protect all people who are poor or oppressed. Grant that the leaders of nations respond with justice and relief to those who suffer. Bless all elected officials as they assume new leadership roles. Stir up your strength, O oh God. Come to help us. Beautiful Savior, abide with us during December. Give us your beauty to our give your beauty to our holiday preparations in this challenging season and your grace to the many who have little to celebrate this year. Stir up your strength, O oh God. Come to help us. Mother in God, visit with your power any who are homeless or unemployed and all who are hungry. Protect children from all manner of abuse. Comfort those who live with chronic pain, anxieties, and addictions. Shape us to become your arms of mercy. Stir up your strength, O oh God. Come to help us. Healer of our every ill. Save all peoples from the coronavirus. Sustain medical workers. And provide for hospitals and clinics. Heal the sick accompany the dying, and comfort the mourners. Stir up your strength, O oh God. Come to help us. Holy God, the beginning and the ending, our hope as we wait, we praise you for joining us to our ancestors in the faith. We bless you for your prophets who call us to righteousness and a promise, a new earth with peace for all. For the word of your covenant, we thank you, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God. We praise you for the coming of Jesus, our Lord, who lifts up the lowly, heals the suffering world, and proclaims your way of mercy and truth. For your word, who is Christ, we magnify you, O oh God. We magnify you, O oh God. Send your spirit to all who receive your word. Nurture our faith with your grace. Accompany us with your might and empower us and empower our zeal for your justice and joy. For your word through the church, we praise you, O oh God. We praise you, O oh God. All praise to you, holy God, today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Friends, I encourage you to take a moment to share a sign of peace in your household. Text it to a friend. Share it on Facebook. 
or plan on calling someone to share the peace later today. Ready, Jonathan? Let us pray. And we pray like this? Okay. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, glory. forever and ever. Amen. God of hope, who brought love into this world, be the love that dwells between us. God of hope, who brought peace into this world, be the peace that dwells between us. God of hope, who brought joy into this world, be the joy that dwells between us. God of hope, the rock we stand upon, be the center, the focus of our lives always and particularly this Advent time. May God direct your ways in peace, make you abound in love for one another and strengthen your hearts until the coming of our Lord Jesus. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and for always. Amen. Go in peace. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.